Okay, so don't quote me on this, but I think Battle Fury is back. Not certain, there's even been some debate in the Game Leap Discord, right? But Battle Fury did get buffed. It now gives 60 damage, also Perseverance got buffed, and so did Void Stone. So overall, this item received a massive buff within the last patch. Also, there were some changes on Cleave that make it a little bit better at fighting and less at farming, but I think that's good for most of these carry heroes. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at Juggernaut, Eternal Envy specifically playing him, the best carry player in the world. Hands down, really, there's no competition. Playing a new meta hero, Juggernaut, who I think is pretty good and I have some ideas about, buying a Battle Fury. So there's a lot of things I want to talk about, and let's get into it. Also, if you guys think this patch was pretty good, like I did, like the video. Also, if you think Juggernaut is going to be a top meta hero, like the video. I kind of want to see what people are thinking, right? Like, do you guys think this hero is good or not? So I guess that would be the way of voting for today, because there's been, as I said, a lot of debate. I personally think Jug is being slightly overhyped. That's my hot take. But let's get into the video and see why this hero is at least better. If you guys are excited for patch 7.24 and want to see pros play the heroes that are probably going to be buffed or that are going to be very popular this patch, go check out the Game Leap website. Over there, I'm going to be doing pro replays and we are having a 50% off winter sale right now. Guys, it's unbelievably cheap, probably cheaper than anything else you've ever bought, any other subscription you've ever purchased. And it's your boy Speed trying to create content for you guys so I can continue to make YouTube videos that you guys enjoy. So please click the link down below. And hopefully I'll see you there. So I didn't really want to watch the landing stage within this video. He was counterpicked by a Slaughter. He did a generally good job last hitting considering he got literally counterpicked. I mean, Slaughter is probably one of the worst matchups for Jug in all of Dota and basically every stage of the game. Thankfully, he had a Chen with him, saved Dota putting in work, but it's still a very, very difficult lane. And so he came out all right, 27 CS. And the first thing you need to note is his items. In my opinion, if you're going to be building this battle for your build, you must. You have no choice but to buy a Wraith Ban and some Treads. You need Need attack speed to work with your ultimate and also in my opinion treads are pretty broken right now i think treads are one of the best items in dota because of how cost effective they are considering you can buy a casual gloves of haste for 400 gold within the laning stage to amp your farming or just fighting and now at this point i love the play that he makes he did get recalled top so i guess it's a bit of a cheat code but in general it's good to go to the enemy safe lane as juggernaut you're one of the better fighting early game cores simply because spin is a good Ability. Also, you have 9 armor, 80 damage, and decently high movement speed. And really, I like what he's doing to amp his farm here. He's sort of dragging the wave, and we'll see him do this a little bit more later on. Uh, but it's important to note that as Juggernaut, you can play pretty aggressive, right? As long as you know your threats. If he sees Slaughter, he has to be a bit careful. But other than that, this is just a great rotation Juggernaut can make compared to other carries. If you're playing a hero like Spectre or PA, you shouldn't be doing this. I want to be very clear about this. Even if you're buying Battle Fury, you can show up the fights on Juggernaut as we're going to see him go for the Omni Slash on the Phoenix and force out the egg here. All right, understand that Juggernaut can show up to the early fights and actually push towers, which is something other cores can't do. And it's sort of why I like the idea of Battle Fury on Jug. It's the same reason why I like Battle Fury on Ricky. You have this carry that can fight early game with you, but still buy a Battle Fury and farm and skill into the late game. In fact, Jug is one of the fastest farming heroes in Dota, as we'll see in this game. Now we have to look at the reason why he buys a Void Stone, right? This is actually one of the main reasons why I like this current build. Void Stone got one of the biggest buffs going up by 0.5 mana regen, which is actually a ton, right? That's massive. It's really, really massive. It just makes this item pretty valued to have, which we're going to see here. Now, combining with Intelligence Treads and the mana regeneration from this Void Stone, he can effectively farm. And let's just watch his patterns for a bit here, right? Pushing in the top lane, watching his team farm mid, no big deal. And this is where Jug becomes efficient. You can spin down the wave, quickly then take a small camp. And really, you should be using spin to farm a lot. That's actually one of the key themes of this video, or or at least of this Juggernaut gameplay, Eternal Envy spins a lot of waves, right? As he does it again. And the reason is you're just trying to be efficient, as efficient as possible. And this is one of the best farming patterns in Dota. He also finds the Faded Brooch, which is one of the best Juggernaut items. That might sound crazy, right? But you actually lack a bit of movement speed without the Phase Boots build, so you could technically buy a Windlace, which actually wouldn't be that bad, to be honest. I think you could buy a casual Windlace on this Juggernaut, and it would be pretty effective. But the Faded Brooch is great, because movement speed on Juggernaut is fantastic, and so is Max Mana. It's not bad to have. But as we're going to see here, the main thing you want to do currently on Juggernaut is primarily push in the top lane. You're a very durable core who always has the option to spin TP out, so it's very good to just push waves in as far as you can. The further you push in the wave, the better of a play it is as long as you're not feeding. And yeah, that, that that's kind of about it for the early game as Jug. He potentially TP'd to kill the Slaughter, wasn't able to get the kill, 
No big deal though, right? He's like, oh, I can show up to a bottom fight because he is looking for fights, right? Eternal Envy on the Juggernaut is looking for fights because your hero can help. You can help, especially when you have Omni Slash. You probably do about a thousand damage which is plenty to help with any sort of kill. Once he realizes it doesn't work out, you're going to be spinning down waves, spinning down camps, and basically using the spell off cooldown as long as you know you're safe to farm. And because power charts are so broken right now, you just farm extremely fast. I mean, they technically haven't been changed too much, but the reality is that with these Wraith Bands, you have extremely high attack speed. And I'd love to say that there's like more to the formula here. It's really just a game of, hey, I don't want to die to Slardar, so as long as I know where Slardar and the rest of their heroes are, I can split push effectively as Zergonaut. You'll even notice that his team is fighting top here. He doesn't like the way he's looking, so he just TP's bottom to pressure out the Underlord. As he's level 10! He's level 10! That is one level below the enemy mid laner and two levels above any other hero on the enemy team, right? Besides the Timber Summit, obviously. <laughs> and as you can see, it's just super effective. He's able to pressure out the Underlord and actually solo kill him here. As long as you have good attack moving, you can get away with the, the power treads here. As I said, you're pretty fast with the Faded Brooch, so try to get this item if you can. It seems weird, but it makes a lot of sense. And now with good attack moving, as you see, hit, move, hit, move, he's finally able to create distance and finish him off with an Omni Slash. And that's really important to understand for Juggernaut when you're playing this hero in the early game. Don't just walk up an Omni Slash. Make sure they are separated off of a creep wave. Otherwise, that spell is complete garbage. And yeah, now he's back to farming. It's it's crazy, guys. He's absolutely insane. And yeah, now coming out of a fairly mediocre laning stage, I wouldn't say it was a bad laning stage. It was fine. He's able to have a 14 minute battle free with three kills. And uh, that's the reason why I think Jug is good right now. You're just one of the fastest farming heroes in Dota. You do have some lackings within some mid game fighting if the enemy team gets a bit tanky, but for the most part, you just farm, farm, farm. I mean, look at this. I'm, I'm going to speed through a bit here or just do some, some casual farm watching just to really show you the pace that this hero just shreds through camps. And as you can see, he puts a priority on the waves, guys, right? He's running through the jungle and jungles towards the next creep wave. It's sort of like jungling towards the next gank, which I talk about a lot within my videos, but he's even jungling towards the next actual jungle camp, uh, which is just great. And now if I slow this down, you're going to see the raw damage that the cleave from the Omni Slash does, right? The Battle Fury now, after the change, just 70% cleave, right? Which is a super high number. 70% cleave is absolutely no joke. And it's one of the most underrated parts of Battle Fury. A lot of people see its cleave as only farming, but it's actually extremely good for fighting now. And we're going to see that here in a moment. So the Slaughter blinks in and you can just see the Slaughter is not actually getting Omni Slash, right? Or when he doesn't get hit by the Omni Slash, he still takes a ton of damage just from the Omni Slash cleave. And so does the Timbersaw as well, right? It's just overall a really, really strong interaction that is hard to notice if you don't slow it down. And yeah, this is basically the benefit of Battle Fury Jug. You buy two Wraith Bands, you buy Power Treads, you buy a Battle Fury, and then you actually can fight. Contrary to popular belief, right? You get plenty of attack speed, which is basically how Omni Slash works now. Actually, I shouldn't say basically, it is how Omni Slash works now. It's based upon your attack speed. So as long as you have these items, the Battle Fury does not feel that bad for fighting. And then you are one of the fastest farming heroes in Dota. Just watch this, guys. Literally, if we skip ahead in this game, just a couple minutes forward, he's 4 0 and 5, right? Great score, obviously. But look at his net worth. I mean, this is just insane. He's literally 4k above the enemy team. And sure, the enemy team does not also have a flash farmer. I understand. So it's making it slightly better than it may look. But it's crazy. You also then buy a Manta afterwards, which helps out your farming even a little bit more. But now I want to quickly stop to give you a quick PSA. I think Mask of Madness might be good on Jug. I was told this by a friend of mine, Stars. He let me know of this and i've been also theory crafting it and want to try it out in a pub myself but i genuinely believe mask of menace on juggernaut could be very good you can actually pop it while you're omni slashing which means you're going to get an insane amount of attack speed and, and because they nerfed the duration of the silence it probably won't get you killed as you see it only lasts six seconds and it gives you 110 attack speed in addition it's one of the best farming items in dota in fact i wouldn't even be surprised if you could literally go treads to wraith bands into a mask of menace into a battle fury like that sounds pretty fine to me it might seem kind of greedy but you can play around it effectively and you still have spin to use for defensive capabilities so i really like the idea of this and i think it might become popular so i'm kind of giving you some hindsight and now for the final clip and now for just one more fight i really want to show off this next item that he buys he goes for an abyssal 
which I think is a great item to really finish off this build. Manta and Battle Fury doesn't necessarily give you the ability to track anyone down. It doesn't really allow Juggernaut to stay on top of targets. In fact, this is one of Juggernaut's main weaknesses. He often struggles to actually stick on top of people because he does not have an innate form of mobility or stun, which a lot of heroes do, right? Slark is Pounce, PL is Phantom Rush, Sven has a stun, Wraith King has a stun, PA has Dagger and Blink Strike. Jug doesn't really have any of that, so you really need to substitute it with some sort of mobility item. I think even something like Shadow Blade for low MMR pubs or even medium average MMR pubs is actually quite good on Juggernaut. That's just kind of a side note. But now we're going to see the effectiveness of this build, right? He's absolutely shredding this Dark Willow, using the Abyssal Blade to go to his next target actually somewhat reliably. Actually, a pretty interesting interaction there. It seemingly allows you to choose who you want to jump to next because the Abyssal Blade forces you there. So I think that's something pretty useful. And really, this is just great for Jug because once again, as I said, it's relatively easy to kite out Omni Slash. You can buy a Glimmer, you can buy a Ghost Scepter, you can buy Yules. And therefore, just having this Abyssal after the Manta is a perfect purchase. And yeah, now if we look at the net worth, he is 8,000 gold ahead. He is 8,000 gold ahead that's just i mean that's literally crazy uh, you could you could be like once again there's no hard carry but timber farms pretty fast and so does underlord sure they might not have had the best game but they're only 10k ahead and most of it's because of the juggernaut so this build in my opinion and battle fury in general has a lot of potential i'm not convinced it's good i just want to put this video out there basically alerting you guys to the potential of this build because that's what we're trying to do here at game leap give you guys good information and things that you can hopefully apply to your pubs so that you can get ahead of the curve and yeah let me know how this goes for you guys also let me know in the comment section if you think this build is legit or a fluke that people are just like oh jug got some minor buffs i think he's not actually good let me know what you think i personally think jug is five to ten percent better and deserves to be picked a little bit but as i said i want to know what you guys think so let me know and yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace if you guys are excited for patch 7.24 and want to see pros play the heroes that are probably going to be buffed or that are going to be very popular this patch go check out the game leap website over there we are having a 50 percent off winter sale right now Guys, it's unbelievably cheap, so please click the link, and hopefully I'll see you there.